On the night of March 5, 1873, on the island of Smuttynose, two Norwegian women were brutally murdered by Louis Wagner. Smuttynose is one of the most isolated islands in the Isle of Shoals, made mostly of rock and at the time only housing the Honvit family. The Red House, as it was known, was a small two-apartment building occupied by Marin and her husband John in 1870. Marin's sister Karen came from Norway after having a broken heart and got a job at the neighboring Appledore Island. A year later, Marin's brother Ivan and his new wife Annette joined the family. John's brother Matthew also joined them, and together the three men had a successful fishing business. Louis Wagner had been living in the area for a while when he met the Hanfits. He was described as very large in stature, with fair or blonde hair and steel blue eyes. It was said that all the ladies were after him. He had no job, no place to stay, and they took him in, taking care of his rheumatism and giving him a job in the fishing company. He soon became a close friend of the family. On the night of the murders, Louis had been staying in Portsmouth for about a year doing odd jobs. Ivan, John, and Matthew went out to draw trawls and were not able to make it back from Portsmouth before dark. That morning, Marin was found covered in blood, screaming. Jorg Igr Ingerbergsen of Appledore heard her and carried her to the other island. The rock Marin hid under for nearly seven hours is now known as Marin's Rock. Later that day, investigators from Appledore found a broken clock, the axe, and a teapot smeared with blood, along with the body. The teapot suggests that the murderer ate and drank after committing the crime. The paper that night, though it got most of the names wrong, told a story chilling enough to create a manhunt for Louis Wagner. He was soon found and arrested in Boston, and brought back to Portsmouth via the train. At the station, he was met with a lynching mob of around 2,000 people, throwing stones and chanting. Though he did not seem surprised when arrested, nor did he ask what the charges were, he fervently pleaded his innocence, and as he was brought to the prison, his knees shook. Many women visited in prison and came out claiming that there was no way this man could have committed these terrible crimes. He was soon moved to Saco, then to Portland, and finally to Alfred, Maine, due to jurisdiction arguments. It was decided that Smutty Nose was Maine territory, and therefore he must be tried in Maine. All who observed him throughout these proceedings said that he was pious, well-mannered, and showed no signs of guilt. The trial began on June 9, 1873. Louis Wagner was the only suspect. This is a diagram of the Hanfit house from the time. Here being where the axe was found, four being where Annette's body was found, nine being where Marin and Annette were sleeping, six the couch where Karen was sleeping, and ten the window where which Marin escaped, eleven the chest of money, and fifteen the bed under which Karen's body was found. According to Marin's testimony, this is what happened on the night of the murders. The three women had gone to bed around ten, realizing that their husbands would not make it home before evening. Karen was sleeping in the kitchen because she was in between jobs, and when Ringe the dog began to bark as an intruder entered her home, she was brutally beaten with a chair multiple times. Marin heard the commotion and came running out, dragging her sister into the bedroom and locking the door. Marin screamed for Annette to run out the window and get help, but though Annette made it outside, she said she could not move or scream due to fear. Louis ran outside, found an axe, and began hacking her to death violently. Marin heard Annette scream, Louis, Louis, and saw Louis's face in the moonlight. Marin told her sister Karen to help come climb out the window with her, but Karen said that she was too tired and could not move. Marin grabbed a heavy skirt, jumped out the window into the snow, and ran away, leaving her sister behind. Karen was then hacked with an axe and strangled. Louis dragged the body of Annette into the house, and had a cup of tea before searching the island vigorously for Marin. Though he did not find her, he needed to begin heading back to Portsmouth to set up an alibi. Marin huddled with her dog Ringe under a rock from 11 o'clock at night to 7.30 in the morning, afraid to come out because she didn't know that Louis had left the island. Three people testified that on three different accounts, Louis had mentioned that he was so poor he would not mind murdering for money. James Burke's dory, which had gone missing the evening before, was found in Newcastle. Also in Newcastle, Louis Wagner was seen going from Newcastle to Portsmouth by at least three witnesses. The boat was identified as James Burke's because he had just added new thole pins that day.
Louis Wagner was staying at 25 Water Street in Portsmouth, now about where Prescott Park is. Mary Johnson, the daughter of the owners of the boarding house, said that when Louis came in that morning, he said, Mary, I am in trouble. I've gotten myself into trouble, and I know. She also testified concerning the bloody shirt found behind the boarding house. It was confirmed to be Louis's shirt because she recognized it, seeing as she had mended the buttonhole recently. The blood on the shirt was confirmed human. After going to the boarding house, Louis got on a train for Boston. There, he ran into many people that he knew, who testified that he was there. He got his hair cut, got new clothes, and went to a boot store, reportedly pointing to a boot on the floor and saying, I have seen a woman lie as still as this boot. Along with Norwegian coins and money, a white button was found in Louis's pocket, the same button that Karen had in her purse. Louis was last reported being seen at a pub on Congress Street, getting some ale. After that, his whereabouts are completely unaccounted for until 6 in the morning. Of course, Louis Wagner tells a different story. He claims that the bruises and blisters on his hands, assumed to be from rowing, were from helping a stranger load crates into a cart. He said the blood on his shirt was fish blood and not human. He said that he went to a different bar on Congress Street, he didn't remember the name, and had two more drinks. Then he felt sick, so he wandered Court Street until he slipped on some ice and lay there, in the road, until about 3 a.m. He then said he went back to the boarding house, slept on the couch, then left early in the morning to look for work. He could not, however, have slept on the couch, because George Lode said that he slept on the couch that night, and no one testified to seeing him in any of the places he claims he was. The only argument the defense could make in Louis's case was that all the evidence presented against him was circumstantial and should not be counted. However, the button in his pocket, the money, and the shirt were all very conclusive. Louis Wagner was the killer. After only 55 minutes, the jury came back with a verdict of guilty of murder in the first degree. Many appeals on Louis's behalf were made, and Louis, before his sentencing, claimed that John had paid people to testify against him and had actually killed the women, or had told his wife Marin to kill the women. It is impossible for John to have killed them because John was cited by many witnesses being in Portsmouth that day. Also, he did not have enough money to pay so many people to testify against Louis on behalf of him or his wife. After being sentenced to be hanged, Louis escaped Alfred Prison and was found a week later in Farmington, New Hampshire, having survived in the wilderness on ferries. He was then transferred to the Thomaston State Prison. Louis was hanged on June 5, 1875, two years after the murder and the trial. He claimed he was innocent until the day he died. His hanging was the last until 1885, under the death penalty in Maine. The Honfit house was overrun by souvenir hunters, ripping down blood-stained wallpaper and windowsills. Some people, like Anita Shreve in her novel, The Weight of Water, claim that there is a statement made by Marin saying that she was the one who committed the crime. This is an attractive alternative because so much rested on her testimony, but a closer look at the evidence has caused all serious researchers of the case to definitively say that no such document exists, and that Louis Wagner was guilty and was the only highly successful in charming his audience. The true killer of these women was found, and the fact that people still debate this shows what an actor Louis Wagner was. We must not forget the victims of this terrible crime, not only the two dead, but those survivors. Ivan, who lost both his wife and sister that night, was said to always have looked sad, to be withdrawn, and eventually went back to Norway. Marin also went back, and John ended up remarrying. The graves of Annette Christensen and Karen Christensen are located in the Portsmouth South Cemetery and are still visited today. Tu m'aimes encore, c'est quelqu'un qui m'a dit que tu m'aimes encore, serait-ce possible alors? Serait-ce possible alors? Mais qui est-ce qui m'a dit que toujours tu m'aimais? Je ne me souviens plus, c'était tard dans la nuit. J'entends encore la voix, mais je ne vois plus les traits. Il vous aime ses secrets, lui dites pas que je vous l'ai dit Tu vois, quelqu'un m'a dit que tu m'aimais encore Me l'a-t-on vraiment dit que tu m'aimais 
mais encore serait-ce possible alors mmh, 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 mmh. 